In this video, I'm going to look at atomic structure. So we look at the particles that make up an atom, and they're often referred to as the subatomic particles. That's basically because these particles are smaller than the atom themselves. We'll look at how these subatomic particles are arranged and the properties that they have. So in other words, their mass and their charge. And for the purpose of the video, I'm going to use a simple 2D representation of the atom. As you get further into AS chemistry, we'll need to be a bit more thorough about um, especially electrons and where they um, or how they are arranged in atoms. But for the purpose of this sort of basic atomic structure video, the 2D model's fine. So we'll start with the, the centre of the atom, the core of the atom, and that is known as the nucleus. And these rings around the outside of the atom, so outside of the nucleus, these are known as the shells or the energy levels. Now, I'm sure you already know this, but we'll just say it anyway. Atoms are made from protons, neutrons and electrons. So these are the three subatomic particles that I was referring to at the start of the video. So what we're going to do now is look at where are they in the atom. So the first particle we look at is the proton. So I'm using these red spheres to represent the protons. And you can see I've put three protons in the nucleus of this atom. So the thing you need to know is the protons live in the nucleus of an atom. I've put a second subatomic particle in the nucleus and I'm representing these with the blue spheres and these are the neutrons. So neutrons also live in the nucleus of the atom. The third and final type of subatomic particle is the electron and I'm representing these with these smaller green spheres and the electrons live in these shells. So, important rule to know about atoms, atoms must have the same number of protons and electrons. We'll explain why in a moment, but because I've got three reds, three protons, I must have three greens, three electrons. So I'm gonna put two in the first shell, just put them there and there and I'm going to put the third electron in the next shell. Now what I've actually made is a simple model of a lithium atom. So how do we know that it's lithium? Well it's all to do with the number of protons in the nucleus. So you can see we've got three protons and there's only one atom with three protons, and that's lithium. And I've drawn up here the information that you would see in the periodic table for lithium. I've simplified it a little bit. You'll see why in a future video. But this number here actually is a little bit different to seven. But I'm just keeping it simple for this first, this introductory video on atomic structure. The important thing I want to get from this is this smaller number of the two is what we call the atomic number. Now, the atomic number tells you how many protons are in the nucleus of the atom. Sometimes it's referred to as the proton number. But essentially, there's only one type of atom with three protons and that's lithium. So we're going to look at the subatomic particles in some more detail now. So you can see I've just transferred the information from the previous board to do with where these subatomic particles are in the atom. I've put that into the relevant row there. So the protons live in the nucleus, so do the neutrons. The electrons live in the energy levels or shells, we can call them. Ultimately, where we're heading with this board is to try and explain why the protons and the electrons for atoms 
have to be the equal in number. So they've got to be the same for atoms. So the next thing we'll look at is the relative mass of these particles. So that relative just means compared to one another. So protons and neutrons, well, they have very, very similar masses. So their relative mass is set at 1. The electron, however, that's much, much smaller than these. And they, I think roughly you'd need approximately um, 2,000 electrons to equal the same mass as one proton or one neutron. So you'll often see the relative mass of an electron quoted as 1 over 2,000. So that just means the mass is a 2,000th of a neutron or a proton. You might also see the word negligible in there instead, or nil. Now, um, I don't really like nil because everything has a mass, even if it's tiny, so we'll go with the fraction. So we'll look at the charges now, and we need to know the charges of these three subatomic particles. So the charge of a proton is plus one, neutron, neutral, no charge, so zero, electrons, well they have the opposite charge to a proton, so they are minus one. So why do you think atoms have to have the same number of protons and electrons? Why must they be the same? And you can see I've written the answer to that on the board at the bottom there. Atoms must have no overall charge. If they have a charge, they're called something else. So atoms, to keep the charge neutral overall, the pluses must equal the minuses. So the protons and the electrons must equal each other. So if we go back to our original board, and we're just going to explain what this higher, bigger number represents. And it represents the mass number. So the smaller of the two numbers is the atomic number, which is the number of protons in the nucleus. The bigger number is what we call the mass number. So you can you saw on the previous board that the the only two particles that contribute anything really to the mass of an atom are the protons and the neutrons, so the reds and the blues. So this number here is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So we'll just bring it all together now, we'll just tie everything up, what we've learned on this board, these two boards, sorry. We've got these, these two numbers here, we can tell a lot from this. We can tell from the smaller of the two numbers how many protons the atom's got. And because the charge, the charge of the proton is positive and the charge of the electron is negative, and atoms have to be neutral overall, this is also equal to the number of electrons. So this lithium has got three protons and three electrons. And you can see we've got three reds and three greens. So if we think about the bigger number now, which particles contribute to the mass of an atom? Well, they are the protons and neutrons. But we know from this number that this atom's got three protons. So out of that seven, three are protons, so the other four must be neutrons. One, two, three, four. And you can see probably a nice easy way of working out the number of neutrons, and that is the difference between those two numbers. So the difference equals the neutrons. So now if you looked at something else, and we'll do an example in a moment, 
if I put some information on the board, you'd be able to look at those numbers and go, it's got that many protons, therefore that many electrons. The difference between those numbers is this, so that's how many neutrons it's got. Simple. So we'll go for one that's going to make us think a little bit. So we'll go for selenium. So the numbers are a little bit more tricky than what we've just had. So start with the smaller number. So selenium must have 34 protons. Selenium's an atom, atoms are neutral, so it must also have 34 electrons. What does this number tell us? Well, this is the mass number. Well, of the 79 mass number, 34 must be from these 34 protons. So the rest is from the neutrons, because they're the only other particle that have got any mass worth speaking about. And so the 79 minus 34 equals the number of neutrons. So that's obviously 45. Now, what are the chances three of my A2 students have just bought me this T-shirt as a leaving present, and I'm just doing a video on protons, neutrons, and electrons? So we'll use it to finish the video off. So we've got this element of surprise, ah, and we're told that there's a 104 in there and a 213. Now, if you notice, the smaller numbers on the top now, so that's, that's quite good in the sense that it's always the smaller number which is the proton number. So we are saying that this element has 104 protons. Atoms of this element are neutral and therefore they must have the same number of electrons. So 104 electrons as well. The 213 is obviously the mass number of this made up element and to work out the number of neutrons, remember it's the difference between these two numbers. And the mass is made up from protons and neutrons, so of that 213, 104 are protons and therefore the difference is the neutrons, so that's 109 neutrons. And I suppose the reason it's the element of surprise, it's because element 104 is actually Rutherfordium. So RF is actually 104. And it actually has a different mass number as well. But that's the surprise. So thanks to Jake, Tom and Becca for buying me this fabulous leaving present. And I wish you all the best.